Hello everyone, I'm Kate and we continue studying um, learning object-oriented programming in deep learning. We're moving on to the second section, the research section actually, where we will discuss why it's very important and very helpful to use classes in all of your deep learning tasks, assignments and homeworks. And it narrows down to the fact that when we use classes, it makes our code very reusable across multiple assignments. It also keeps our code very clean and reduces possible overlap. And also it helps us to modify particular parts in our code very easily, which is all the good things we really want from our code. And so if you ask like, when should we use classes in the deep learning assignments? The brief answer is pretty much anytime. If you want to load the data and make any transformations, perform any transformations to the data, you can use a class called a data loader, which is like loading the data. If you're building a model, you can use a model class or when you're performing any training, evaluation or testing, you can also do this with classes. So classes are very helpful concepts. And um, in the next few minutes, I'll just show a few examples in a very, very simplified examples. And um, that may, maybe will make it a little bit more clear why it's very, very helpful and useful to use classes in the assignments. So let's imagine we want our goal is to load some data. Let's imagine we have a full data set containing of 20 numbers, but our model and like our idea how we want to train our model, it expects not the entire data set, but just like small batches of data of some particular varying size. So to accommodate this requirement, we can use a class. Let's imagine we call it simple data loader class. And this would be a very simple class. All it does, it just takes the data that we will pass and it will break it will break the data into small batches of some size that we'll specify. So how it will do is imagine we have a data set, just these 20 uh, numbers, and then we will specify our data loader the separate one and we'll say uh, please take this data set and break it into some small batches and in each batch we should have just like five elements and then when we'll print the results we will see that indeed we've got this not just the entire data set which is like we just got small batches and each batch just have um, five numbers which is very helpful how we structured our class is all the same concept we covered previously so we have the init method when we specify that we will have a data set and the batch size that we will pass as our parameters. And also we'll have a separate method called get batches, which will just break our huge data set into small, small batches. It's very helpful. It helps us to reuse these components like later. And also if you want to say like, oh, I don't want to have five elements in the batch. I want to have 10, you can specify this and you'll get a different result. So this is briefly how we can use classes when we deal with different data. Same approach we can use when we are building a model. So what the model really is, is we take some input data, we perform different all kinds of transformations with this data, and then we output a transform data. And essentially the entire process, we can also kind of make this in rapid, just using the, a class. Imagine we just have a simple model class where we have just two parts. In the init method, we just specify all possible transformations we want to do with our data. So in this example, we want to multiply by two, we want to add two, and we want to divide uh, by two. And then we have a separate method, like a forward one, when we just like call all our transformations. So we want apply transformation one, two, and three, and then output the result. And so how it essentially works, exactly the same thing like we discussed previously. We call a model called simple model. We provide a data, which is 10. And then the model will take this 10. It will be initial data. We'll go to the forward function, forward method. We'll go to this initial data and this 10 will go in the initial data. It will call the transformation one, 
which is that's just multiplied by two would be 10 by two would be 20. Then transformation two would be just a plus two would be 22. And then we pass this 22 transformation three, which is just divide by two would be 11. And so when we run this, we receive 11. And this is very helpful because as you can see, first of all, you can modify the data. Let's imagine it would be 20, got a different result. But also if you created this class, the model class, you can reuse it across multiple homeworks. Imagine you created a great model in one homework and you owe like a great component of one model in one homework and you want to reuse it. You can actually reuse this, the entire component. Or imagine you really want to keep the structure of the model, but you just want to change something like some transformation, particular theme, not just multiply by two, but by three or something. You can also change it here and it makes it very, very helpful. Um, you can have a one more addition if you really, if you don't want to hard code these numbers, like two, 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 you can pass it as additional parameter to your class. So imagine here, it's exactly the same code, which is all we did is just like passed those tools as a parameter. And then when you call your model, you will just specify the number uh, when you call the model. The result would be exactly the same. It just like sometimes when your model is very, very complicated, and you don't want to hard code any values and you really want to keep them separate, this method could be very helpful. So yeah, so this is very briefly about how we can, why um, essentially all these classes and the concepts of classes are very helpful in the deep learning. And uh, here we just show some examples. And so the final section will also provide just a few questions, which you can read and just test yourself to understand the concept really well. And we also provide some hints that can help you to understand um, and check yourself, and check your understanding. All right, thank you so much for listening to this recitation and let us know if you have any questions.